Hello, I'm Jason Ball, President and CEO of the Lincoln Chamber of Commerce, and this is Business Link, the Chamber's podcast to tell the stories of what's going on in the business community in Lincoln. Uh, we are here in the AOI podcast studio today, and uh, I'm excited for this conversation. We have one of our community institutions uh, to talk with uh, when it comes to energy delivery. We've got Brandy Johnson, who is the Senior Manager for Public Affairs at Black Hills Energy. Welcome, Brandy. Thank you, Jason. It's so good to be here. Brandy, uh, uh, you know, for folks that haven't met you, yeah. uh, give them just a little bit of your professional history and background, if you would. Yeah. So I first came to Lincoln to go to Nebraska Wesleyan University, actually. Love which it. Which Love we it. might have in common. Yes. Go Prairie Wolves. Yes. Also Plainsmen. That's right. <laughs> um, yeah. So I came to Lincoln to do that. And I've been at Black Hills now, oh, just over 11 years. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and uh, so you've been with Black Hills Energy ever yeah. since uh, graduating. Not quite. Okay. I had a few stops in between. Okay. Um, but yeah, mostly in like public relations, community affairs sort of yeah. roles, a lot of community facing stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, we're fortunate to have you involved in a lot of the things that we do in, in terms of chamber coffee and, yeah. and uh, sponsor of a lot of our events. We do a lot of work on economic development together because natural gas is really mm-hmm. important for growing the economy. Um before we get into any of that, though, t- tell for folks that haven't been exposed to it, Black Hills Energy is a very large organization. Can you give them yeah. a, a sense of the size and scope and reach of Black Hills as a company? Yeah. So, so Black Hills Energy, our parent company, is Black Hills Corporation, mm-hmm. and as you might imagine, it's headquartered in the Black Hills. Yeah. So, founded in Rapid City, South Dakota, in 1883. Mm-hmm. Um, And then through a series of acquisitions and growth, came to Nebraska in 2008 Mm -hmm, when they mm -hmm. acquired Aquila, which I've been here long enough in Lincoln to remember paying a check to Aquila back in a rental shared situation with roommates. And um, that's how they came here to Lincoln, um, but serve one point. Oh, I'm going to get the number wrong. 1.3 1.3 million customers, electric wow. and natural gas in eight states, and just over 800 communities or so. So oh my Midwestern uh, really roots are in small town. Yeah. Um, Lincoln is actually one of the larger communities that we serve population-wise. Mm. Um, so we serve in Nebraska 319 communities, mm-hmm. and you know they're as small as – Bennett, you know, around here, Palmyra, yeah. Firth, a lot of those smaller towns are kind of more what we see across our footprint. Yeah. And and here it's all natural gas. In, in Nebraska, yeah. is it all yeah. natural gas yep. or is there an electric component anywhere in Nebraska? No, not in Nebraska. Right? Yeah. So, you know, we are a regulated utility with the Nebraska Public Service Commission. So we're serving around 300,000-ish customers across yeah. the state all with natural gas. And then um, we do have electric utility customers in Wyoming and South Dakota and Colorado. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's, it's an amazing organization. We're so proud to have uh, such a large facility here. How many, how many people work in, in Lincoln for Black Hills? So in Lincoln, there's probably around 120 ish. Yeah. 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 Yep. And primarily we have, you know, a lot of folks here in Lincoln that are out serving the business, right? Mm -hmm. So we've got um, service technicians that are out working on people's appliances, heating, cooling equipment. Mm -hmm. They're, you know, running our gas business and doing all the things that it takes to get that, uh, the gas to the meter and get your house warm in the winter. Yeah. Well, your, your team has been a great one to work with. Uh, you're one of the first calls when we get some of these economic development projects, you know, companies that are evaluating coming in, whether they're going to be a large industrial gas user or just, uh, um, you know, your typical heating and, and uh, uh, climate conditioning type yeah. of user. Uh, they need to know about the gas company. Yeah. And so you're, you're one mm-hmm. of the first phone calls that we make, and we appreciate so much uh, working with your team. Yeah. You know, that was a newer role for me when I came to Black Hills, mm-hmm. learning about economic development. And um, I was really fortunate to be able to do the Heartland Basic class where mm-hmm. I really got to learn, like, what is a utility's role when it comes to economic development? And you said it. It's really important, right, that the community has the energy they need, new businesses, especially if they are one that has maybe some processing where they need a lot of heat. Mm-hmm. Um, they're going to need to have conversations with us to find out what we can do and if um, you know, we're in the right spots to help their business grow. Yeah. Yeah. 
Well, it's it's an important service, but um, I think uh, kind of bringing it back to what most people experience yeah. is, you know, Black Hills is one of those utilities that, that you uh, write a check to every month, right. and and you get a you get to enjoy your your warm house, right, yeah. and your working stove, and yeah. um, it, and so we're coming up on on fall and winter. What do what do consumers need to be thinking about as we kind of get into this season where, where natural gas as a heating source is going to become more important to them. Yeah. Well, I don't know about you, but I walked out of my house this morning and I saw frost on yeah. rooftops. Yeah. <laughs> and for me, it's always like, oh, it's kind of the start of winter heating season. And mm-hmm. this is where um, I know personally I'm going to kick on my fireplace probably for the first time this season um, and enjoy that, you know, cozy blue flame that's in there. Yeah. Uh, but I fully understand everything that it takes year round to make sure that, you know, we are ready to deliver that energy on the coldest days of the year. Right. Yeah. It's not been too long ago where I was like really, really cold. We've had some polar vortexes and we know that it takes a lot of energy to keep keep us warm and keep everything running when it's cold out. And so. October is always the start kind of of, you know, you'll hear it, the shop fall light up or mm-hmm. winter heating season. It's actually, I think October is energy awareness month okay, uh, because it's kind of that point where you're getting ready to, you know, kick on your furnace and get ready for winter. So does, does Black Hills Energy advise homeowners on like, you know, five things they need to be thinking oh, yeah. about as, as they turn on the furnace this year or anything yeah. like that? Yeah, absolutely. So this is the part of the year where we start telling people um, steps that they can take to save energy. So like getting your home ready for winter, right? Like I know um, making sure we've got our first freeze in the forecast. So you're going to be, you know, making sure your house is winterized and you're ready for the first freeze. But along with that, making sure you're ready for heating season, call and get an inspection, make sure it's working. And then you want it working efficiently too. So, you know, the most efficient energy is the energy you don't use. And so making sure your furnace filter is changed and it's the right furnace filter and it's installed the right direction. And then like, yes, that is Details an important matter. tip. Details matter. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but just doing all of those things now so that when your furnace really is running every single day because it's 30 below out and you want to keep your house yeah. 70 degrees, it's got a lot of temperature difference to make up and it's going to run and you want to make sure that it's at the best that it can be. So for this or other company information, I want to jump in. Uh, people can yeah. go to BlackHillsEnergy.com. Mm-hmm. Again, BlackHillsEnergy.com. You can find out more about uh, about about all of this. Yeah. Um, you know, Brandy, I think the other the other thing that I think of as, when I think about Black Hills in, in Lincoln is, you know, you're a large employer, over 100 yep. per, person employer. I've mm-hmm. uh, got a very in, institutional presence here. Yeah. Um, and so your, your team's doing a lot in the community. The company's doing a lot it's in the true. community. Tell, tell me about your community yeah. involvement at yeah. the company. I was really fortunate when I joined the company to already join an incredible legacy of people that have gone before me mm-hmm. giving back in the community. And, you know, organizations that we've supported for a super long time are like junior achievement. That's one where, you know, we've had employees involved in teaching classes and I've been able to do that myself with my two kids. And um, United Way is a big part of our company, too. I recently learned this week that we've been a partner for United Way across our eight state footprint um, since the 1940s. And one of the things we do. With that is we actually, um, you know, incentivize employees to give what's called their fair share. Mm-hmm. Um, and if they do that, then they get an extra day off. Um, yeah. And then we match all of those donations 25%. And mm-hmm. so sending those out to United Ways across our footprint to help people, um, it's really great. And the other thing we're doing, you know, we do at this time of year too, is we encourage employees and others to donate to Um, what we call our Black Hills Cares program. Mm -hmm. And that is how we help um, our customers in need of energy assistance. And so here in Lincoln, um, we take those donations and then match them dollar for dollar Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and send them to the Salvation Army to help out when people need help, a little hand up in the wintertime if they've gotten behind on their bills or they've had Mm -hmm. circumstances change or whatever the case may be, um, so that the Salvation Army can do that great work of helping people. That's awesome. And, and people can keep that donation local if, if yeah. they want to make sure it stays in Yep, it'll go to the Lancaster to County. Yep, it mm-hmm. comes in that way. And um, 
Yeah. And then they'll use it to help people. That's, boy, that's Here amazing. Here in our community. You, you know, Brandy, I think that this makes an excellent point too. Um, uh, you know, we live in an age where people like to to complain about big business or throw yeah. rocks at businesses of all sizes. Yep. Um, businesses do so much uh, to support people through uh, some of the service programs that we have. You know, you mentioned United Way and Junior Achievement and, and the Salvation Army. I mean, I don't know how organizations like that would be able to function without the support of businesses like Black Hills yeah. Energy and others. Yeah. Well, we're so fortunate in Lincoln to have so many companies that care yeah. um you know you're always in good company right like my son uh they ran they didn't run this year but they've run the pumpkin run and that yeah. was this weekend right yeah. with the sports council and you see all the people that are there and all the organizations that are supporting the sports council and the pumpkin run black hills was one of those this year um it's you see that and it's feels really good to be a part of that and then when you're out volunteering like we sponsored day of caring and yeah. you can see and we actually have our logo on the black on the back of these shirts uh, but people are wearing them all over the city, you know, whether they were at Community Crops with us or at the Good Neighbor Center, you name it, just out companies giving, you know, empowering employees to go out and volunteer and give back in their community and see how they're making a difference with their own two hands. Well, these your team members that, that live here, I mean, they're invested in the future of this community. Their mm -hmm. kids go to uh, yep. the same schools. Their, uh, their families uh, have benefited from some of these service organizations. Yeah. Like, they're, they're just as invested as anyone else in yep. the business community is mm -hmm. in seeing the success of Lincoln Grove, yeah. I think. Yeah, and that's a really great point because we want to come alongside our employees, right, and yeah. what they care about and, you know, where they're giving their time and how we can – how we can help give back in that way is always important. Yeah. Well, um, on behalf of the community, I want to thank everybody at Black Hills for, for being involved and leading in that way. Yeah. That's, that's such a great story to tell. Um, you know, we were talking earlier about the sustainability report, oh, yeah. and people can find this also on yeah. BlackHillsEnergy.com. But uh, can you share a little bit about yeah. the sustainability report? Yeah, you bet. So um, every year, so we release a sustainability report, which talks about our commitment to sustainability. Mm -hmm. And so for us on the natural gas side of our business, it was two years ago where we made a commitment um, to achieve a net zero goal by 2035. Okay. And so um, our sustainability report basically outlines how we're going to do that, how we're giving back in the community and really breaks down that strategy mm -hmm. um, really detailed and what that's going to look like and how we envision that happening mm -hmm. and then the progress that we've made for it. Right. We've released sustainability reports for several years now that detail that out. And so one of the things we shared this year is that um, since 2020. Two, we have decreased our emissions on the gas side for our distribution system by 27%. Wow. So we're getting closer. Yeah. Um, and some of the ways that we're doing that are things like um, investing, continuing to invest in our system mm -hmm. and making sure that we are modernizing it. One of the things, um, one of the first things that we did really was looking at um, – our construction process and making sure that as we are replacing things that we are taking into account the emissions factors and reduction that can come, the benefits of that mm -hmm. as we're doing those replacements. Um, and then another effort is around damage prevention, which is what you know you might think of as safe digging, right? And so okay. yeah. really making sure that we're doing a lot in that space um, and then investing in some lower carbon fuels. Uh, renewable natural gas is an area where we've been involved in for quite some time. Um, we currently have 10 projects across our footprint uh, that are renewable natural gas projects. Here in Lincoln, we work with the city on the wastewater treatment plant yep, yep. Um, so that that is turned into renewable natural gas. How about, uh, I'm interested to know, it uh, seems like more natural gas fueled vehicles. Oh, yeah. Uh, are 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 becoming a thing in other communities. Is yeah. that something you're seeing in the Nebraska area in Lincoln? Yeah, actually, Lincoln has um, has kind of been a leader across our footprint for compressed natural gas vehicles for some time, starting way back with the Bookmobile. If you remember <laughs> the Bookmobile, rolled around town and it was a compressed natural gas vehicle. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it started out initially because it was economical, mm -hmm. uh, but also it has a lower emissions profile. It's you know it's a cleaner burning fuel. Um, that really you see more now in heavy-duty industrial vehicles. And so um, the city, our trolleys, yeah. the red trolleys that roll around, those yeah. are compressed natural gas. And there's some Star Tram buses. And then you see some fleets around town. Um, Uribe, 
They have, yeah. yep, they've done great work in converting some of their refuse trucks into compressed natural gas, which much cleaner burning as you see them rolling around your streets. And um, and so I think, you know, as we continue to see a lot of transition and focus on reducing emissions from vehicles in particular, mm -hmm. um, we'll continue to see, you know, trucking companies and um, other larger fleets uh, with heavy duty vehicles in particular yeah. Uh, yeah, continuing yeah. to convert to compressed natural gas. Just another way that we can't operate without a good natural gas company in town. A lot of things come back to energy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, well, it, Brandy, I just want to thank you for everything that Black Hills is doing in the community. You guys are such an important yeah. corporate partner, not only for the chamber, but uh, yeah. for these other organizations we've been talking about today. And uh, I just want to encourage everybody to go to blackhillsenergy.com yeah. and take a look. Yeah. Well, thank you. I'm yeah. really honored to be here, right? Like I get to be the face and I get to go out and do all the fun stuff, but I wouldn't be here except for all the amazing people that I get to work with every single day yeah. and the work that the chamber does to help our community stay strong, help our our community grow and just continue to be a fantastic place to live that I am so fortunate to call it home. Yeah. Well, we're all, we're all going to win together, right? <laughs> That's right. Awesome. Well, on that note, this has been uh, Brandy Johnson and Jason Ball from the AOI Podcast Studio at the Lincoln Chamber of Commerce. Please do go to blackhillsenergy.com. You can find more about what we talked about today. And you can find more of these episodes at lcoc.com on our news page. Thanks, and we'll see you next time.